HTC Vive Pro 2, all you need to know. When the HTC Vive Pro 2 arrived, you could easily be forgiven for thinking it was the same VR headset released by the company in 2018. That's because, aside from some color changes on the front faceplate, it has mostly stayed the same from the original. But under the hood, things have been significantly improved. So much so that HTC now claims to have the best-in-class display and a true 120-degree field of view. Is the upgraded Pro significant enough to compete with HP and Oculus? Finally, we've had a chance to see what the Vive Pro 2 offers virtual reality enthusiasts who are looking for the best. Let's find out in today's video, and for more such meta updates, subscribe to MetaHub now! Here we begin! The Vive Pro 2 is a headset in a darker version of the Vive Pro, similar to the Vive Cosmos. It's black instead of blue, but the design is nearly identical. The front panel combines the nubbly points of the original Vive, which the base stations used to track position, with the front-facing stereo cameras of the Vive Cosmos, which the headsets used to track surroundings. With the press of a button at the lower left corner, you can move the headset section forward or backward against the face max section, allowing you to adjust the distance between the lenses and your eyes to improve focus. In addition, the IPD can be adjusted using a knob on your front panel's lower right corner. The head harness is designed similarly to the Vive Pro with a three-point system, wide plastic arms on the sides, and a wide strap on top. The back of the harness is heavily padded and has a dial for tightening that section using the sidearms, while the top strap has velcro fasteners that can be manually adjusted. The headset includes a pair of on-ear headphones attached to the sides of the harness by their own plastic arms. The arms rotate forward and backward to align the ear cups with your ears, and they flip in and out to allow you to hear what's happening around you. A volume rocker is on the back edge of the left ear cap, and a volume ear cap has a mute button. A 16-foot cable runs from the headset through the harness and behind you before connecting to the included link box, which connects to your computer. The box is a regular gray plantastic fink architecture enclosure about the size of the wallet, with a port for headset cables and a power button on the front. The back panel houses a power adapter connector, a mini display port, and a USB 3.0 port. Cables are included along with a mini DP to DP adapter. An indicator LED is located on the link box's top. As with any tethered VR headset, you must be aware of where the cable is to avoid tripping over it. Display The visuals are the most significant improvement to the Vive Pro 2 over the previous generation. This headset has the highest resolution display to date, with 2448 by 2448 pixels for eye, for a total of 4896 by 2448 visible pixels. That's a significant improvement over the previous Vive Pro's 28080 by 1600 pixel display. It's also outperforming the Vive Cosmos with 2880 by 1700 pixels, the HPC Reverb G2 with 2160 by 2160 pixels, and the Oculus Quest 2, and it definitely shows. Because of the high pixel count, you get a stunning VR experience. We were struck by how impressive the graphics on this headset are during our gaming sessions. Unfortunately, the screen door effect is also gone and you'll get lost in the experience. This time around, HTC has used a dual stack lens design with two lenses redirecting the image for a wider field of view. This has a larger sweet spot and a more realistic view of the world around you, according to reports. The company also claims to have a true 120 degree field of view in this manner. There's no denying that the Vive Pro 2 looks fantastic, so we tested it thoroughly by revisiting classics in our favorite VR games, Creed Rise to Glory, Space Pirate Trainer, Half-Life Alex, Super Hot VR, Skyrim VR, LA Noir, and Medal of Honor. Above and Beyond were among them. We also discovered that not only do these games look and sound great on the Vive Pro 2, but they also play well. Setup and Usability Regarding the Vive Pro 2 setup process, we have mixed feelings. On the one hand, once you've got everything in place, ideally in a place where it can be left alone, its systems work in tandem incredibly well to ensure your movements in VR are always well tracked, even if you're waving your arms behind you, and that you're safely aware of the limits of your real world surroundings. On the other hand, initial setup can be a pain. Multiple cables, a large play area, and some finicky positioning of external accessories are required. 
Through both seated and standing setups are supported, the free roaming room scale experience is most likely what most people envision when they think of playing a VR game. The HTC Vive Pro 2 features at least 2 by 1.5 meters of clear space, which may be difficult to achieve in some smaller rooms. Once you have that space, position the two base stations in opposite corners of the designated areas, ideally slightly above head height and pointing down towards the center of the area. Keep in mind that each of these units requires its own power supply from a wall socket, which limits where you can put them. All of these should ideally be in the same room as your PC for ease of use. The headset comes with a 5 meter cable that plugs into a separate breakaway Vive Link box. This also requires its own additional power supply. This box also connects to your PC via USB 3.0 and DisplayPort. So if you want to charge the two controllers simultaneously, you're looking at five wall sockets in use and that's before you consider your PC and monitor. The installation then proceeds to Valve's Steam VR software platform, which links your VR hardware and your PC. While the HTC Vive Pro 2 is more accurate, its setup is far more demanding than the portable fun of the MetaQuest 2 which includes all of its tracking systems in the headset itself and can be set up in an entirely new play space in a matter of minutes without needing any computer. The HTC Vive Pro 2 is not alone in having these constraints. The otherwise excellent Valve Index also has them, and it's an unavoidable byproduct of the sheer power required to run VR applications at such high levels of quality. Software and Games after you've spent the time getting everything set up for the HTC Vive Pro 2, you'll understand why you bought it in the first place. It's a stunning way to enjoy some of the best virtual reality experiences. You can access many virtual reality games for PC by integrating with the Steam VR ecosystem. Unfortunately, this is about as good as VR can currently get. Whether you're slicing and dicing glowing blocks to the pumping soundtrack of Beat Saber, exploring the moody and wondrous City 17 and Half-Life Alex, or walking the snowy tundras of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's VR version. Thousands of games will work perfectly with the HTC Vive Pro 2. Even if it isn't natively supported, you'll have a good time playing what should be Oculus exclusive titles if you're willing to install the third-party compatible app Revive. When it comes to VR gaming with the HTC Vive Pro 2, Steam and Oculus aren't your only options. Instead, consider purchasing a subscription to HTC's Viveport Infinity service. This gives you access to over 600 VR apps for a monthly fee, allowing you to jump in and out of as many titles as you want. Let us know your views in the comments below, and for more meta updates and trends, subscribe to MetaHub now. Let us know what you'd like to see next in the comments down below. Drop a like on the video and make sure to share it with your friends who are also interested in meta and metaverse content. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon. Take care.